On today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you the top 10 things that you need to know before you install that outlet or receptacle. So stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Just a quick disclaimer, we are gonna be working with electrical components today. My electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different. So always make sure that you're always up to date with your current local electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Make sure that you turn off the power from your circuit breaker before working with any type of electrical work. And if you're not sure and unconfident working with electricity, please, hire a qualified certified electrician and my full disclaimer is in the description down below. With that being said, let's get to the video. The reason why I'm making this video is for all my DIYers and for those who are brand new at working with electrical components, such as this receptacle, as, as you might say, an outlet, there's a lot more tiny details that goes into it and I wanna get into those tiny details before making that decision of putting on an outlet. So with that being said, Let's get to tip number one. So tip number one is choosing the correct receptacle or outlet that fits your needs. Typically, these are broken down into two types, which is residential and commercial grade. I'm not gonna go deep down into each one of these outlets. That's for another type video, but to simplify it, residential grade is a lot cheaper than commercial grade. This is a residential grade. Most of the time, they have that blue backing on them. They come in tamper resistance, tamper resistant, weather resistant, and just your plain regular ones, not even tamper resistant. Newer built constructions require tamper resistance. They are made a lot cheaper. And you can see that the quality is not that good. Parts right here, it's all melted on the side. This is a lot lighter and this is a lot cheaper too. This one I bought for 71 cents. These are just piled up in a big box, all scattered. And these are a couple of dollars more because characteristics that they have. At the same time, they are too, are not made that well. If you look at the commercial grade ones, you can tell that they have more quality on them. See how well built they are? And they are a lot heavier. You can tell the difference, the residential versus the commercial. You can already tell and feel that this was made a little better to withstand abuse. If you're just planning to install this in an area where you're just gonna plug in the lamp and leave it for, for years and never touch it, this grade is the right for you. But if you're gonna be using something, an outlet like this on a workshop, your garage, kitchen, if it's GFCI. If you're gonna be using this quite often, this is best for appliances where it's gonna be using, it's getting a lot of wear and tear. This one is actually the best way to go because it will, was, someone was saying that these will actually last for 100 years if used regularly. This one is made with spec grade. This is a clamp style. You just put your conductors in there and that should be good. This one around $2 and something cents compared to this 71 one, but if you are in a budget and depending on how many you're gonna buy, it's totally up to you. I don't know your situation, but for me, I would end up buying the little extra just so I can have that tamper resistant because I do have kids and I'm, I'm gonna be, you know, if when I buy something, I don't wanna have to go back and replace it later on in the long run. I wanna be able to make it last. That's why I prefer going with commercial grade receptacles or outlets, but it's totally up to you. And that's for you to choose all this right here commercial grade you can tell that they are built well and this one different style this the face is a lot more decorative this is a 20 app receptacle that's why it has that t right there but we're not going to get into that i'm just going to be talking to you about the residential versus the commercial grade now what goes from there is totally up to you to choose so tip number two is choosing whether you're going to go with tamper resistance or non-tamper resistant if we take a look at two, these two basic ones, one is non-tamper resistant, one is tamper resistant. You can tell automatically that the tamper resistance have that TR on there and there is a little plastic insert in there to prevent any type of tampering or any inadvertently taking any foreign object to go in there. Now for newer constructions, um, they actually require that all 125 volt, 15 amp or 20 amp receptacles, just like what you see here, be installed in any living space. That is to prevent any, you know, children from getting electrocuted, sticking anything in there. So they require that. So always make sure that you're always up to date with your local electrical codes to see which one will fit 
your area. Tip number three is choosing the right receptacle for your type of wiring. Now when you look inside your J-Box or your electrical box, whatever you want to call it, um, make sure that you find which type of wire that you have in there. Most commonly, there are two types of wires, which is the 12 gauge and the 14 gauge that's used. Mostly you see receptacles are being powered with 12.2 and 14.2 is mostly used with lights, um, light fixtures and switches. But look inside your J-Box first and see which type is the right type for your receptacle. Now, if you look into the receptacles, there should be something written on the receptacle which says whether it's a 15 amp or a 20 amp. Look into this receptacle, you can easily spot that it's a 15 amp receptacle because it says right there, it says 15 amp. And if you look into this receptacle right here, it says on the face, 20 amp receptacle. You can, you can also spot that this is a 20 amp because it has a T right there, meaning that this can take a 15 amp power or a 20 amp power. So if you look inside your electrical box and you look into the, in the type of wires in there, you can actually spot it. This one's been cut off, but this is a 14-2 wire, meaning it's a 14 gauge with a hot and a neutral, two of them, and you have a ground. So that's pretty much 14-2. Now, this receptacle, 15 amp, is suitable for a 14-2 cable, all right? so. You don't want to put a 20 amp receptacle on a 14 gauge wire because this will overheat. This will overheat, it just doesn't mix, okay? But you can use a 12-2 because it's a, you can always go higher. So you can always use a 12-2 wire on a 15 amp receptacle. So that's okay. But you can also, you have to use a 12-2 wire on this 20 amp receptacle. You can't use this on here. You can't go lower because it will overheat. If that gets all too confusing, I'll leave the specifications up here for your friends to choose which one, which right cable is right per each receptacle. Tip number four is very easy. Make sure that the equipment you're using, including the electrical box and the receptacle, is UL approved. UL approved means it's underwriter laboratories. It's pretty much like a third party which pretty much tells or examines the product and say, hey, it's good to go, it's up to code, it's constructed correctly, and it's of high safety quality. Now you can check that if you take any of these, um, let's just check these two. You can tell that it's UL approved because it has that label right there. It usually says UL on it with a circle. Okay, so that means it's UL approved and it's good to go. Now, sometimes you might be getting some products that don't have this. I would be weary of trying to use that. Um, this one has a little tiny UL right here, meaning that they are UL approved. Let's check another one, this middle one. And on that says UL on that stamp. So that's tip number four. So let's get to tip number five, which is wiring your receptacles correctly. Now there's two different types. Here's the residential one. It has screw terminals. And there's one where it has the clamps. Just take your conductor and pretty much just insert it through that terminal and you just tighten it and you're good to go. There are instances where you have to loop it around this screw terminal. Now let's go loop that up. And if you look in the back right here, there's actually a little gauge on the back where you can show how much you can strip using that as your gauge. Right when you do that, you're gonna make a little hook. Now you can use any type of tool you want. For me, I like to use this Volt Claw. Again, all the tools that I use in this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. And you can just make that little loop right there. Now, just a, just a tip, you can use, when you try bending these, make sure that the end of this hook is leveled with the end of that insulation. That's just a, you know, a quick tip to show you friends. So you have to hook this up in a clockwise manner. Let's just go put, let's just say we're gonna hook it up the wrong way and go in a counterclockwise. And I'll show you why we don't do that. The reason why you, it's a bad practice to do and never do it on a counter or clockwise manner is because when you start tightening this right here, it's actually going against the, the hook itself. And there's a possibility that that wire will start slipping off like that. So the more you tighten it, the more this, this gets squeezed out of the terminal, making it loose and 
not as tight as you would, would have made it with a uh, clockwise position. So if this actually comes out while it's inside that box, there's a possibility that this will come out, it'll, you know, arc onto another terminal and possibly create a fire and it wouldn't be a good picture. If we go on a clockwise position, right there, you see that it sits nicely. You don't have too much insulation taken out. You don't have too less taken off where it's going to be wedged in there with inside the terminal. You don't have that too much exposed wire, just perfectly between the, the screw terminal and the plate. So right when you start tightening this, you can already tell that it is starting, the, the conductor or the wire is starting to go with the direction and it's starting to get sucked in and coiled up in there. So the tighter that you tighten this screw, the more that this wraps around the terminal itself and it has that nice connection and a snug fit. That's the simplified way to, you know, let you know straight to the point why we do it clockwise, all right? Always go with the same direction of the terminal screw. Tip number six is doing pigtails. Okay, so pigtails is pretty much getting six inch wire, depending if you ever have a 12 gauge or 14 gauge, and just pretty much rolling it to and installing it onto your terminals already, leaving it a six inch length. And the purpose of pigtails is so that you can connect it to the to your wiring already. So let's take five eighths off. You can use your connector. I like to use Wagos, by the way. These are awesome. You can just insert it and you can just insert it through the lever, close it up, easy as that. No need to twist it with a wire nut and it's a lot cleaner and faster to do it. And you do the same thing with the neutral as well. But the purpose of this is that in case your receptacle fails and you have another receptacle down the line, pretend there's another wire connecting from that receptacle to this one and we plug it onto the next one. Say for example that this receptacle fails, it won't affect that receptacle in the circuit because it is connected through a pigtail onto here, which is all, all the power is feeding onto this connector going to that receptacle. So that's the purpose of having a pigtail. So I highly recommend that you always practice that method. And the only thing that you're not going to do a pigtail on is if it's on the end of run, meaning that's that's the last receptacle on this on the circuit. So in case this one goes out, there's really no need because that's not going to affect anything because it's the last receptacle on the circuit. So tip number seven is tightening down all these terminal screws that are not being used. When everything is connected and everything's good to go, you shouldn't leave this unscrewed. So let's go and screw these in. Now the purpose of screwing these in is because when you put this back into the the electrical box, you don't want these in these little terminal screws sticking out. There's a possibility that there's a conductor that might, you know, touch this this uh, terminal and it will cause sparking. As much as possible, you want everything nice and clean, nothing sticking out of these terminals because when you push these wires in, you want to make sure that none of these wires, including the ground wire, is not touching the uh, the terminals okay so you want to practice that to prevent any arcing and sparking in there okay so make sure you tighten any unused terminal screws always make sure that your wire is not energized always use a voltage detector i leave a similar product like this on the description down below but always make sure that there is no power going into these things all right turn off the power from your breaker tip number nine is when you have enough wire, sometimes you have really short wire that you can't make this work. But if you can, if you are replacing a receptacle and putting a brand new one, most of the time, these things are already bent, bent and they have nicks on them. Let me zoom in there. And over time, once these goes, you know, being used, these are bent multiple times. You're the new owner of the home, but you don't know who the past owners were, but you don't know how many times they change this out and they constantly bend these copper wires. You can tell that they're sustained damages. So you, what you want to do is you want to just cut off this old bend right here, this old hook and just, you know, splice a new one and just take out and go for a new a new run just like well just like just like that and bend a new shepherd's hook if you're going to reuse this it's already brittle 
it's bent so many times already. This, there's a possibility that this could snap off and break and you know could cause further troubles later down the road. If you have enough wire, which you should have, you should strip off a new 5 8 copper inch right there and you know make a new hook and wrap it onto your new receptacle. So don't settle with these old ones, all right? Last but not least, the last tip is tip number 10, which are push terminals. Now there's a heated debate on this, whether to use it or not. Um, personally, I do not like using the push in terminals. Um, you can only use the 14 gauge on here. You can't use a 12 gauge. Okay, so 14 gauge. The problem with these are, is that when you put them on, there's a possibility that when you're shoving this back into the, the box, the electrical box, there's a possibility, possibility that those connections in there would make this so that this will pretty much pop off. I know that this, you know, pretty much is very hard to take out, but there's always a possibility and it's a very common source for failure. Electricians also call this as backstabbing or speed wiring, which I do not recommend. Um, sometimes you can only use this um, one time because once you use it, once you take it out, it's pretty much worn on the internals and you know, it's, it's going to be loose on the next time you put it. This doesn't go against the NEC, but you always want to make sure that it is um, up to your code on your local area. Overall, I do not recommend doing this because it's just, I don't know, it's just, I believe it's just not safe and I don't feel well doing it. Um, I sleep better at night knowing that it's around this screw terminal. It's nice and tight and it won't move other than because I've had situations where I've actually um, taken some of these outlets off and right when I'm taking it out, these pop out, these wires pop out and it's just really scary to see that how loose they are in those. Now, given this is nice and tight because this is new, but you don't know who the past owner was and how many times they take taking this on and off and pretty much damage the internals of this push-in terminals. You don't know that it'll probably cause a loose wire and you know I just don't want to take that risk. So just make it safe for yourself and either put it through you put it through this screw in terminal or use one of these this clamp style and this is not actually a push terminal because this is Oh, don't get that confused. This is actually a clamp style. So don't get this confused by pushing terminals because this is a clamp. Right when you put this through right there, it, it, it takes, you'll need to tighten it down right here. Make it nice and tight and you know for sure that that is not coming off, okay? So that, don't, com don't confuse this to that and also, tightening this screw right here does not tighten this. This is a separate entity. This has no connection to this. This is its own self mechanism that pretty much latches onto that wire. I highly don't recommend using the push in terminals. All right, it's just not my style, but it's up to you. So once again, friends, that's just my top 10 tips. Again, there are many other tips out there that I want to tell you and show you, but these are my top ones that I think are the most important ones that I believe are the, what you should be looking out for when you're installing a receptacle or outlet. Um, it's not as easy as just taking, screwing it in. It's all about looking out for the tiny details because that will save you on the long run and prevent any future problems. Now, if you have any other tips that you want to add, please freely leave it in the comment section down below. We would love to hear from you and we would love to get the community going and being engaged on these um these conversations so thank you so much if you found big value please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on future videos just like this and more electrical videos to come and future renovations of my home stay tuned for that so thank you so much i'll see you in the next one